Welcome to the Sustainable Living Podcast. Tips, tools, and tactics for living a heart-centered life that honors Mother Earth and her inhabitants. The information shared on the Sustainable Living Podcast reflects the opinions of host Marion West, Janice Fryant, and their guests. Please use your own discretion and research before applying any information to your individual situation. Now, here are your hosts, Marion and Janice. Hello, everyone. This is Marianne West, your host today. And I have on the show today an educator. His name is Matt Duncan. And he is not only an educator, but he's also an author. <laughs> the book is something all of you who are parents or grandparents are going to love, love, love. He wrote a book, The Upcycle Toys Club. And what it is, it's a guide to use all kinds of things you can find in your recycle pin and turn them into toys. And your kids can be involved in it. So it's fun for the whole family. It saves you tons and tons of money. And at the same time, you're saving the earth by building creativity in your children using something we already have. So it's kind of a win-win type of situation. And I love it. He also has an online club and we talk about it later. So listen to the very end because we do have a surprise for you. All right. And now on to the interview. Enjoy. My main job is that I'm an educator with uh, a lot of conferences and not organizations. And I will come in and I'll write programming that runs parallel to adult programming so that when the kids and the parents uh, are leaving, uh, whatever the event is, they're leaving with an aligned message and they can have a similar conversation about the messages and values that they gained. Uh, the Cardboard Project, the Upcycle Toys Club, is a project that uh, my partner and I started, uh, created about uh, uh, about a year and a half ago. We launched it at the beginning of 2017. And that is one tool that I use you know, in my educator's toolbox. We do workshops and parties and, and things like that around the, the Cardboard Projects. Uh, actually, uh, and this is something I'd love to talk about on the show, a few... I guess about three or four months ago now, uh, we ran a workshop at a at a conference for a nonprofit that we work with, and uh, they actually didn't have any expectations when they they brought us in. Uh, it was it's a friends organization, and you know we were just coming in to help, uh, and we ended up raising five thousand dollars for charity. Wow! Which, yeah, that was totally that's unexpected. great. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's one of the ways that we that you know I found to use this tool uh, to get out of the box thinking and results. Nice, nice, nice. So thank you for the book. So I, I very much appreciate that. And the story you tell in there, is that how it actually got started? Or why don't you tell me how the whole idea got started? Yeah, so there, there's actually two, two parts of the story that kind of work together to, to really trigger us to create this project. Uh, the first one was uh, my business partner and I were at a friend's house uh, in late 2015, and we were watching their kid. For the day and uh he was about two and a half at the time and we didn't really have anything to do with him and so they, they were actually living out of the country we were visiting them where they were and when you're leaving the country for a year you don't want to bring so many toys for your kid so he only had a few toys and we were looking for something to do with him and so i said oh i have an idea so i took two uh, big water bottles like the the one liter water bottles and uh, a paper towel roll and we turned it into a speaker system, you know, speaker system that I pot into, and uh, it, it amplifies the music passively, so there's no electricity needed, and it's using, you know, stuff that could be trash. From that point on, uh, it totally changed their life because they they hardly had to buy him any more toys. Now this kid learned, uh, his name is Elijah. He since learned that he can make all of his own toys, and every time I'm over at their house now, uh, I, I I see more toys made out of cardboard uh, than I do out of plastic. So that's part. Story. Uh, part of the story is uh, my partner and I were working uh, on site at a at a client's property, uh, and it's a summer camp. And we we were we were standing in the parking lot, and we saw a UPS truck come in, and they were dropping off a bunch of art supplies to the art room, like in, in cardboard boxes. And at the same time as they were bringing in these boxes, we saw them taking trash, like cardboard trash, from the kitchen and bringing it over and and dumping it in the truck in the dumpster. And we said, wait a second, there's there's a disconnect here. Like there's all these resources. Like you could use cardboard in so many ways in an art room, yet they're taking, you know, 20 pounds of it every single day and throwing it in the dumpster. 
So how can we recreate, you know, a connection, close the loop on what's going on here? Uh, and and between those two events, which were uh, maybe a month and a half apart, I came up with the idea for this book. We we created it. We put it to print. Uh, and we've been doing workshops and events around it since then. Nice. Why don't you describe some of the toys you are featuring in the book? Definitely. So in the book, there's, I think it's 40 three or 46 different toys. And there's things that are that are simple and easy to do, like, you know, making a, a car garage ramp for little toy cars, or making a, a fake microphone. And then there's some things that are a little more advanced, like making a, a cardboard guitar, or turning your bed into a race car or a princess carriage. And there's a, a whole bunch of different toys that appeal to, you know, kids from age uh, about five, I say is on the young end. And on the high end, around 12 is when they stop being interested in these kinds of toys. However, uh, I really pitched that the book is really for for families. And the goal is to get people to think a little bit differently about how they see resources. Because all of this cardboard, you know, if you've ever bought a, a toy for a kid, what do they do? They play with the box. Right, right. <laughs> Every single parent I've ever met has told me that this is what, what happens. As adults, we're conditioned to think about, you know, we, we purchase an item and it comes in a box and all that we want, the only valuable part of that purchase is what's inside of that box. And we take that item and we throw away all the packaging. But for children, they have not necessarily had that conditioning yet. And we can start to teach them that the entire thing is a resource, not just what you purchased, but what it comes in. Uh, and that also lends towards teaching kids the idea of we don't necessarily need to buy things in packaging. I, I'm a big promoter of bulk purchasing. Um, I, I bring I shop at a grocery store here in Austin, Texas, that it's a bring your own containers. So you just like bring your own packaging and fill up your containers and you can get literally everything there, uh, which is great because it you know reduces the amount of packaging. It, it helps save the earth a little bit. Absolutely. Actually, you know, when you're telling me the story, it almost sounds like kids already know that the packaging is <laughs> is a resource. So we don't really have to teach them. We have to teach the parents to not throw the resource away, but allow the kids to be creative with it. True. I wrote the book. Uh, it, it actually went through like six or seven iterations until we really honed it into to the message that we were trying to, to convey. And part of that message is there's a process to doing this. And it's very easy. And I've actually seen it both in my own house when I was like learning to, to create this type of project and in you know, other people's houses as they were helping, you know, test things out and develop them. And it's very easy for you to just start to see everything as a resource and just start to save all your cardboard. Uh, and then you end up with like a big pile of junk in the corner. So <laughs> uh, and also in in some of our extended resources that come along with the book, we teach that there's a process to doing upcycled toys or any type of, of upcycling project, whether it's toys for your kids or things that you're going to make as an adult, maybe, you know, desk uh, accessories, stuff like that. But the process is that you have to have a specific place where you put all your resources, uh, your cardboard, your cans, whatever it is that you're saving. Otherwise, you just end up with junk all over your house. Uh, once you have a place, then you need to keep a list of the things that you need. And in the, the book, uh, every single toy comes with a list of, I think I call it ingredients. I, I like but that's just because I like to cook, but a list of supplies that you're going to need for each toy. So keep a list of what you need so that you are only saving what you need. Once you have a list, take things from the recycle bin because things from the trash are uh, not necessarily clean. And that's an important message that we're teaching the kids because sometimes adults throw things into the trash that need to be in the trash for a reason. And we don't want kids pulling them out. But generally things from the recycle bin are, are safe to handle. And if you take anything that had food in it, you have to make sure you wash it out. Otherwise, it gets gross and disgusting and moldy. And you get ants and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That teaches a lot of lessons right there. You are an educator. You're a teacher. I feel kids want to learn. So it's more setting examples. And right there, that's project management. That's organization. That's all kinds of stuff. Planning ahead which is some a lot of people don't even know how to do, right? And on top of that, when you're working with, with younger kids, you're really helping them to develop their fine motor skills with the cutting and the gluing and the, and the placing of things. This is really beneficial to kids. Uh, I've done projects with kids as young as two, uh, and in those cases, it's mostly me doing the work, to be honest. Right. But they love it. I have some great pictures of a friend's child playing 
Actually, this is a great story. I don't, I'm just going to tell, tell the whole thing. Please. My friend and I were about to do a cardboard project with his child. And we had this great plan in place for how we were going to use this big box and make some sort of tower. And then the kid sits down on the box and he says, it's a boat. <laughs> I guess it's a boat now. We changed our thinking based on his imagination. Uh, and it's really fascinating to see the way that kids can come up with these projects on their own uh, and, and what they see out of these things that we often just see as, as trash, as recyclables. For sure. We had lots of boats in our patio. <laughs> It's it, yeah. Kids just love to for hours sit in in said cardboard box, and it's like great. Here you're busy, yeah. <laughs> and nothing else needed. So that's that's very cool. Um, you know, you were saying kids as young as two, and said you help a lot. So it's really a good way to bring the family together to do things together as a family. Yeah. Instead yeah. of like here is your plastic toy and involves the whole family. Uh, what I've found is that most families that are really gung-ho about doing cardboard projects, they average about two or three projects a month uh, because it's a it's a combination of not just you know having the motivation to do it, but also the time and also the resources. So uh, what most people end up doing is they spend anywhere from a week to two weeks saving up materials, toilet paper rolls, Amazon boxes, yogurt cups, whatever supplies it is that are needed for any given project, and end up making anywhere from, from one to three projects a month. I've got all kinds of pictures that people have submitted via Facebook and, and that have, have texted to me or my business partner. And we love it. We love seeing the creativity that comes out of it, not just from the kids, but from the grownups. Uh, it's a lot of fun. This has been a really great project. Cool. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning Facebook. So you have a Facebook group where people can showcase their designs and their toys and become friends. If you just search for the Upcycled Toys Club on Facebook, you'll find it. We have two pages. One is a group page uh, where people can can interact a little bit more with each other. And then the other is the, you know, the fan page where we post things that people have submitted to us. But you also have a club, right? You want to tell me about that? Yeah. So, the, uh, so the, the, the whole thing is called the Upcycled Toys Club. And actually, in the book, it talks about how the, the main character, Evan, starts the club. And the idea of the club is that, you know, everybody can be included. Everybody can make projects. Everybody can bring their friends into it. Uh, everybody can have lots of fun building and, and imagining and being creative. So online, if you go to upcycledtoys.club, you can join the club online. And we send out anywhere from two to three toys per month, depending on the difficulty of them and how much time and resources they require. And that it goes along with the book. So in the book, you can see the story in the story. Evan makes all and now I can't remember. It's 42, 46, somewhere around their toys. And the book has 10 of Evan's toys in the back of the book. When you sign up for the club online, then we send out all the rest of them over the course of the year. Are you continuously developing more so people can stay with it? Or is it pretty much... We want another book right now that's that's focused around plastic bottles and cups and all these all this plastic that we have. There's a tremendous amount of plastic in the world. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We have whole podcasts on that. How to <laughs> eliminate more plastic from the world for sure. Tell me more how kids can involve like maybe the neighborhood or take this toy making experience to maybe learn more about recycling and stuff like that. Is that a focus? Uh, so the, part of the focus is to get get kids to tell their friends to to do projects with their friends and really spark their imagination so that as they go, you know, maybe they're at a friend's house and they're looking for something to do and they just see a pile of cardboard and, hey, what can we make out of this? Uh, and I've, I've seen a lot of creativity just come naturally uh, out of this project. So kids that, uh, you know, their parents try to, you know, put them in front of the TV. I just want to go do something fun and they end up, you know, do, making something out of cardboard. We've seen pictures of that, that have been sent to us of people creating arcades. That's a big one. People really like to do that. Uh, you get a couple of kids together and they make uh, different games. And we've seen skee ball. We've seen whack-a-mole. One time some, a, a kid made a claw game where they had like a hook inside the box and you pulled up prizes and put them into a little hole and you retrieved them from the box. It was just like a real claw game. And it was just made out of, out of cardboard. There's a lot, a lot of really fun ways that I've seen kids get involved on their own. At the summit that I was mentioning before, where we raised five thousand dollars through making one of these arcades, we had about twenty kids, twenty twenty two kids, and uh, we split them up into groups to make four different arcade games. 
And they were just so involved that they just blew right through it and they just made them all really quick. And after those four were done, then another three projects came out of it that were totally on. We, we didn't tell them to do it. We didn't give them any direction. We didn't didn't help them. They just popped up, out, you know, out of their the kids imaginations. And it was amazing. Yeah, it sounds really great. And it also sounds like it's very affordable because how much is your book in, in retail? Uh, the book is twenty four ninety nine on Amazon. And then you, the club is like $7 a month or 69 for a year. So it's not super expensive. But even if you just go to the Facebook group, let's say you're really out of funds and mm -hmm. you have a ton of kids, <laughs> you could just go to the Facebook page and get inspired and you said, for example, for a birthday party. Mm. I have said conversations with young parents which might be struggling financially. And then there is that need to make these very expensive, elaborate birthday parties. And it's like, you could do this and kids could have so much fun doing it. Yeah, there's there's no need for these elaborate parties. Uh, it's so easy to do things out of cardboard. The, the cardboard arcade birthday is so inexpensive. If you were to make a party for your kid and you were to do all of the work and not involve your kid. It would probably go a little bit faster if you if you did it yourself. If you were to create four or five games, it would probably take you maybe two or three hours, and the kids would just play with them for hours, without a doubt. I've seen it happen a number of times. Yeah, and if they get to build them themselves, even better. <laughs> exactly. And if you make the party about building the arcade, then you're you're doubling the amount of time that they're going to be engaged. Well, let me use the summit as an example. It with those twenty kids. Uh, it took us, I would say, about 90 minutes to build those seven games. How old were the kids? The youngest was six, and the oldest was 14, and the average age was probably about nine. That's an age where a lot of people start struggling with engagement, and, you know, there's already also electronic distractions and stuff like that mm -hmm. and it sounds like this is really some which can draw kids into to do it you also give a warning in the book about certain tools you want to tell us about that i will preface that i've definitely seen some injuries from these projects and you know over the about two years or so that we've been focusing on creating you know, different toys and testing and playing around i've come to find what the best tools are let's start with tape packaging tape is the best kind of tape for cardboard, that, that clear plastic tape. It usually comes with these little hard plastic dispensers with a blade on them. Uh, and the blades are really sharp. And uh, I actually once had a kid that just like put her hand down on it and just sliced her hand open. So I tell everyone, get rid of those cheap plastic dispensers that it comes with. Actually, we have all of these tools listed online on the upcycledtoys.club website. So you can go check them out there. But we use a, a tape dispenser that has a retractable blade. So uh, as soon as you cut the tape, the blade just automatically goes inside. No injuries, nothing to worry about. Box cutters are also the best, best, best tool for cutting cardboard. Uh, the way that they just slice through it, it's like, you know, a hot knife through butter. However, another exposed blade. So I use uh, a box cutter that has a trigger on it that you have to be holding it down for the blade to come out. So as soon as you let go of it, blade goes away, no chance of injury. And hot glue is is another one of the best tools to hold cardboard pieces together because it dries very quickly and it holds really strong. But hot glue gun can also be a dangerous tool. I recommend using a cordless hot glue gun. Uh, there's a couple companies that make them. Ryobi makes one. Black & Decker makes one. We list those on the website as well. And those give you a little bit more safety and flexibility when you're working with the kids because, A, you're not tethered to a wall, so you don't have to move your projects around as much. Uh, and, B, as soon as you're done gluing, you can just, like, take it and put it up on a high place and keep it out of reach so that it's not such a dangerous item. So, you know, the, it, in, adult supervision with any of these things is important, as with any kind of project that uses tools. You know, at the same time, you can use a good pair of scissors and cut cardboard. Uh, you can use Elmer's glue, you know, make sure it's really safe. I've seen these projects done in, in a couple of school settings where they were literally just using like kid scissors and glue sticks and projects came out great.
It's also a good time so to teach how to be respectful with tools, which is a learning process. And I'm glad you found those tools, which are, I, I didn't know about the knife with a plate you actually have to hold on to, which would be pretty much impossible for little kids to do. So already you only have kids using it, which are a little bit older and understand more about what's going on. Matt, is there some we haven't touched on you would like to tell our listeners? Yeah, actually, we have a free resource that anybody can download. So if you text the number uh, 444-999 and you text the word upcycle, U-P-C-Y-C-L-E, uh, it's going to send you a text message and you can put in your email address. And we have a like a free resource guide that it's like the Join the Upcycled Toys Club kit. And it comes with an Upcycled Toys Club certificate. Uh, and there's a few bonus toys that are included with it and, and a worksheet that helps you to you know nail down the process of starting upcycled toys projects. Wow, that's cool. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Cool. I'm going to text you in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, is there any other anything else that that I can you know provide value to your listeners? About? Um, well, do you want to donate a couple of memberships for a few months for the club? We can ruffle off and get some people excited. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I'll do the full year. Um, let's how about three of them? Okay, cool. That's that's fantastic. You heard it. Three memberships. Three one-year memberships to the Upcycle Toy Club. How cool is that? So, if you want one, this is what you need to do. You need to tell somebody about our podcast. Best, most preferred, most fantastic would be if somebody doesn't even know what our podcast is to get their phone and show them where the podcast app is and subscribe to the Sustainable Living Podcast. And if you look for it, especially in the Apple Podcast app, make sure you really put the Sustainable Living Podcast so we pop up. It has changed and things are a little bit complicated. On Android phones, you might have to download an app. There are lots of free apps out there. One is Stitcher. There's Castro. I'm not sure if it's free. Yeah, I think it's free. And CastBox. Lots of different ones. And you can find the Sustainable Living Podcast and show a friend how to subscribe to it. If you can take a picture of it, that would be super cool. But if not... Just send us an email at sustainablelivingpodcast at gmail.com. So sustainablelivingpodcast at gmail.com. But if you're looking in the apps for our podcast, you will have to go the Sustainable Living Podcast. Got it? All right. So if you don't have a friend, you can, you know, grab their phone and subscribe to our podcast Tell someone via social media, by email, in person, and then send us an email saying you did it. You can leave us a message via social media as well. But I think the safest for me to see it and enter you in the drawing is the email option. All right. You have until the 15th of December and you can end up more than one time. So if you share it, especially with proof, with pictures, <laughs> we're really into selfies these days, <laughs> then you get several entries. All right. If you have any questions, email me or we are on Twitter, Facebook. Now you're going to hear from one of our listeners. His name is Adam Perry, and he is a recycling enthusiast who lives in Australia. Our conversation via Skype ended up not producing very good sound quality, but here is Adam telling us that from being a child on, he has been interested in reusing and recycling as much as he can. Directly around uh, saving the world per se. It was more around um, 
thriftiness and um, like, you know, just saving money. But my parents did love recycling. I don't know. I've always just kind of wanted to make a difference, even when I was little, uh, when I was quite young. Oh, picking up rubbish on my walking on the way to school. It seems kind of weird, but like I kind of uh, collected like nuts and bolts and stuff, and I'd call them gadgets and make uh, sort of small, well, I kind of perceive them now as sculptures, but at the time they were, you know, machines and spaceships and whatever my imagination was saying that they were. Then Adam was telling us how he feels we all can make a difference together. You know, a few like-minded individuals out there who also pick up rubbish on the streets and, you know, especially on our beaches, a lot of that is just put into landfill and, like, this sense of picking it up and treating whatever is picked up, whether that be, you know, a plastic bottle or an aluminium uh, soft drink can. These are all resources that, you know, have travelled and required a lot of resources in their creation. So recycling became the avenue for me, led me to the sort of start of the cycle, of like reducing, you know, the amount of uh, waste and impact on the earth reusing what we already have rather than mining for uh, more crude oil. And this is what he did at work. Prior to me working at um, where I do, they didn't really have a recycle bin and they didn't have a compost bin. I work in the disability industry um, and so I support people who have an intellectual or physical disability or both. And My clients and um, fellow staff members have both uh, really gotten into it and um, it's really believe that um, enthusiasm is contagious. We too believe that enthusiasm is contagious and invite you, our listeners, to let us know what you are doing in your world. Thank you, Adam, for letting us know and for sharing your enthusiasm for recycling. I think a lot of our listeners are sharing that with you. Now, if you want your voice to be heard, let us know. We love to hear from you. I hope you really enjoyed this show on recycling and that you're ready to make some awesome toys with your kids. I know my grandchildren are looking forward to getting to play with some of those cool toys. And I think they like it even more to make them. That's so much fun. As always, you can reach us at sustainablelivingpodcast at gmail.com. We are on Instagram, Facebook. We have a Facebook group, Sustainable Living Tips, Tools, and Tactics. And you can find us on steamit.com. This is a social media platform. I have talked about it quite a few times. And lately, that's where I've been spending a lot of the social media time I have, which is Not a lot of time, (laughs) but there it is. As always, we love for you to support us on Patreon. That just means so much to us. Even a dollar a month helps with production costs and all of that. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you for all the wonderful things you do in this world to make our world a better place. You know, where our children can breathe the air and can see animals and all of that stuff. Thank you so much. You guys rock.